Yo, what is good? Um, here's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. This is my Q&A. Today's March 7th, uh, 2015, Saturday. It's 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, without further ado, <clears throat> excuse me, let's start with the questions. All right, first question is by my dude, Timeless Beats. He says, I know you are, pa I'm, I know I'm past the deadline, but hopefully I'm not too late with the questions. All good, you're all good, because I know, you know, some of my subscribers are from, like, different, um, parts of the world, like, um, Germany, England, Europe, and stuff like that, so, ain't, ain't no harm done. All right, he said, his first question is, is that, he has a bunch of, couple of questions, um, what's the first album you ever purchased? Uh, your favorite rap duo, your favorite genre besides hip-hop, the best MC from the West Coast slash East Coast. Which record labels, catalogs do you like the most? Good questions. I like that. All right. First question he asks, what's the first album you ever purchased? Um, believe it or not, guys, I know you. Got, I'm a big hip-hop head, but guys might laugh at me. Might not, because I know everybody loves this album, but it's uh, it was Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP back in 2000. Um, it was the first CD that I bought with my own money. Uh, I was 13 at the time, so um, still love that album. I don't like that album no more. It's just like I've heard it so much, and it gets so much praise. It's just, I can't stand it. Like I can't when I hear an album, um, so much. Like I just get tired of it. Um, just depending on the album, and to me that album didn't really age very well. You know, that's just my opinion. I know some people might disagree with me on that, but whatever. Um, my favorite rap duo, I have a couple of them. Um, Mob Deep. I mean, everybody knows I'm a big mob fan. I mean, you can tell by my beats and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> Gangstar, um, EPMD, but um, yeah, definitely, but definitely, um, definitely Mob Deep and Gangstar, most definitely. Those, those two, those are like my top favorite duos. Um, favorite genre besides hip hop, uh, I would like to say jazz. I like, um, yeah, jazz. I like trip hop, I like new age, um, yeah, jazz. I love and I love um, I like like goth gothic rock, like you know the stuff like um dark wave, new wave, um, stuff like that. You know like um groups like um the Cure, Bauhaus, um you know people like that. Um, trip hop like you know Portis Head. You know things of that nature. Um, DJ Crush, DJ Cam. You know people like that. Jazz. You know the Miles Davis, Bob James. Um, you know Bobby Hutchison. You know cats like that. You know what I mean. Um, Weather Report. You know people like that. Um, down on the jazz. And I like dance. I like um, I like dancehall too and reggae. But you know from the eighties and nineties, that like seventies through the nineties. Those are like my favorite era, um time of reggae because I feel like at that time like the production was a lot more dirty and it wasn't as Americanized as it is now um so that's our favorite genres uh, the best MCs from the west coast slash east coast um well I would say one of my favorite um from the west coast I would have to say yeah, that's a good that's a good one I don't have a favorite favorite, but I have a couple that I do like. Um, one of them is MC Ren. I like his voice, uh, especially like his earlier stuff, like um, you know, like Shock of the Hour, Villain in Black, and um, Kiss My Black Ass EP. That was dope. Um, those were classic albums in my opinion. I didn't get the the Kiss My Black Ass EP by the way. Um, I just like his voice. Like he's has, has like real grimy voice. Um, he he reminds me like Chuck D in a sense, like as far as like voice wise, and it's just like how he, um, you know, just just this is how he has like that commanding voice. You know what I mean? That's what that's what I like about him. Um, East Coast, damn, that's 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 a lot. Um, my all time favorite I have to say from the East Coast is Kooji Rap, bar none. Kooji Rap, like you know, he's like a pioneer in hip hop. Um, you know, he kind of brought it, brought the whole multi-syllable lyricism, um, type of lyrics and stuff like that. You, people weren't really doing that. You, besides, uh, Silver Fox, which was his, um, his influence, but 
Kooji Rap was the one that actually brought it on the forefront and then people was just like just like how you can rap fast but you're clear that's dope to me and that's very hard to do because you know you have people like Twister I like Twister but um but when you hear it when you rap fast and even like some of Bone Thug stuff you can barely understand a word they say but it's dope but um but you know Kooji Rap he raps like that but it's very clear you know what I mean so that's what I like uh, record labels catalog that I like the most um, hip hop wise I do like um, my favorite is like Relativity because you know Fat Joe's um, first three albums I believe um, Common Beat Nuts um, I think Al Tariq's album came out of Relativity too if I'm not mistaken um, yeah Relativity Loud Records definitely Mob Deep Alcoholics Exhibit His first two At least I think his first Three albums came out Of a lot of records Mob Deep Like I said Wu-Tang Um I used to like Def Jam But Def Jam Back in the 90's Obviously Um I liked uh, Lecture Records Lecture Records Was dope Um Payday I like Payday You know Gangstar Showbiz and AG You know People like that Um Duck Down Records, I like them too. Um, hit um different genres like jazz. I like CTI. They they put out some dope stuff. Um, Columbia, um, back in the day, Columbia Records. They used to put out dope stuff too. Um, what else? What else? What else? I like yeah CTI and and yes CTI I like um, Columbia Records when it comes to jazz. You know things like that. And that's all I could think of at the top of my head. I am my dude Thomas Beats. Thank you for that. Shout out to you. <sighs> the infamous Samaj Glover. What's good? What do you think about the Source magazine? At one point, the Source magazine was dope, man. It had some dope shit, man, in the 90s. You know, it's just like the unsigned hype and, you know, things like that. But they kind of fell off, like, you know, like where I was saying, like, throughout the mid 2000s like like early to mid 2000s they started falling off and then double xl kind of um picked up you know just he kind of they kind of like you know um took over pretty much and then xxl pretty much right now is like pretty much the biggest thing right now in complex magazine but the source was dope at one point but and it was dope for like you know like i said with the inside hype and they had like the fat tapes um section and stuff like that so you know you can make your own mixes and stuff like that um which album has better beats southern playlist of cadillac music or soul food uh i'm gonna have to say southern playlist of cadillac music because you know just like that album right there mind you that album was recorded back in 93 94 so you know it was it was very original um organized noise shout out to them they did all the beats for both albums but uh, Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music was the album that I've heard first, so, you know, just being biased. Um, I like that album. Soul Food, that's a dope album, too. Um, to me, the best album, in my opinion. And I, have to, I, have, I do have to do a review both those albums, but um, those are the questions he asked. Thank you so much. Shout out to you. Um, at what age did you fall in love with hip-hop, and which MC made you fall in love with the genre? Dope question. Um... I would have to say, well, I first, well, I would have to say when I was 13, um, I always loved hip hop when I was young, when I was, you know, a young kid, but what, but I, I, yeah, I would have to say 13 because like, you know, um, you know, around that time, like around 99, like 98, 99, 2000, I was listening to hip hop, but not as much because I just hated. I hated the um, at that time I hated the direction hip hop was going to. At the time, like, cause you know you had Rough Riders, Cash Money, the whole Rockefeller, like, they they kind of brought like the whole digital sound back. They kind of brought the whole digital sound to the forefront because at that time people weren't really sampling. You know what I mean? And RZA too, like RZA, he um. With his first album, um, Bobby Digital Stereo, um, was I kind of feel like he kind of brought 
the whole digital sound to the to hip hop. Um, as far as like you know, like not sample wise, but just like you know, using synthesizers and keyboards and stuff like that. You know, where does it kind of, in my opinion, kind of, I won't say originate, but you, you guys want you guys you guys know what I'm trying to say. Like that whole digital sound, I was just was not feeling that, and it kind of like this hated. I, I just didn't like hip hop at that time. Now I, when I listen to it, I do like it. But um, you know, I, I started listening to Wu Tang and Def Squad, and those are the only people. Anything anybody that was affiliated with Wu Tang or anybody that was affiliated with Def Squad, that's who I was listening to. And which goes to my um, what MC made me fall in love with the genre? I would have to say Redman. Um, yeah, Redman like his whole. His whole character just entices me. I, I love how he, like, his delivery, his voice, his ear for beats. Um, like, his first three albums are my favorites. Uh, what the Album, There's the Dark Side, uh, Muddy Waters. Just on those three alone, like, that right there. Like, Thomas albums. Um, is the albums that you can listen to from front to back. You won't have to skip a track. No whack tracks at all. It's just... You know, just like his, and he's funny. He's funny. He has, he's witty, and he's lyrical, which is very rare in MCs today. And he has dope skits too. So that was my dude Remy Lanes. Shout out to you. He asked me that question. Um, next question is by my dude Zach HG, twenty-three. Excuse me. He asked me, um, are you into battle rap? at all and if so who are your favorite battlers um i'm not really big on battle rap i'm um at one point like back in high school like around 2003 2004 um smack dvds were popping they were like really popular you know you had um videos like the um dvd series like um the come up cocaine um i think it was like cocaine city i, I think it was called cocaine city um, it's been a while since I've seen those, but um, Smack DVDs and stuff like that. You know, I just used to love seeing like Murder Mook, um, Loaded Lux, and you know, cast like that. But it's just like I, I'm not really crazy about it, especially today's because it's just like they just like I don't know, like they go by popularity. They don't go by lyrics no more. They just go by the 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 their status. You know what I mean? Like they just go by. Oh, you know, he wears this, the, the, the illest gear. Um, you know, they talk about, you know, they, and it's so disrespectful too. You know, they talk about people's moms and family. And I know there's no boundaries, but there's there has to be a boundary when it comes to um, certain things, man. Like, you just don't talk about people's moms. And then, you know, they start pulling out guns and they start punching people because they can't take a joke. And it, it, it's ridiculous. And it just, it gets, it got oversaturated over the years. You know what I mean? But it comes to the point where, you had like um, battle grind and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to the people that actually do it. Um, that actually are good. Um, I know my dude Nems, FYL, fuck your life. Shout out to him, Nems Gutter. He started out with that. Um, you know what I mean? Like he he definitely did his thing in that. He's still doing putting out dope music. Um, Karis one, he was a battle rapper, and he just and he's one of the best MCs. You know what I mean? Um, they like a lot of MCs started out battling. You know what I mean? So, but um, I'm just not feeling battle rap at, in in general. Just not really crazy about that. Just, just, just I don't know. It's it's not something I could get into or, like at once. But like I said, around the Smack DVD era, like 2003. To like 2006, like I, you know, I used to like watching those at battles, but like I said, it's just like the whole popularity thing and the the way the shit that they be saying is just like you know sometimes it don't be so it don't be that oh they be like um your mom's sw small crack and be like oh and especially if it's like a celebrity like anything a celebrity will say like somebody like a Jay Mills for example like he'll say like some okay rhymes i'm not a crazy jay mills fan but um you know he'll say a line and because of who he is of his status niggas will be like oh and then the shit don't be all that so i don't know I, I, i'm just not crazy about that zach hg 23 thank you for that question 
Uh, next question uh, by Alan G. What made you who you are today? Um, that's a dope question. You know, it was life pretty much, man. Just like, you know, me growing up in New York, in Queens, you know, just the shit that I had to go through. Um, you know, going through school, been bullied a lot, you know. But mo mo mostly like elementary and junior high school. But, you know... When I fought back, people don't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's how that's how it is. You know what I mean? Um, you know, just going through shit in the hood. You know what I mean? When you broke. You know, like, you see, like, your boys or people, like, you know, the drug dealers around the way and have the nicest gear. You want some of that, but you can't. So you got to go, like, the marshals and stuff like that. Um, not to say I grew up poor, because I didn't. I gotta, we grew up, you know, middle class, but we just lived in the hood. You know what I mean? But um, it made me like really appreciate start appreciating things more. You know what I mean? And that's and I, I'm glad I grew up in New York. You know, it's compared to like where I live here in Florida. Um, you know, it just would have made. I, I think Queens made me the pl person I am today. You know what I'm saying? It's just like the people I grew up around with, some of my family members, cousins, you know, mentors. You know, things of that nature. Um, you know, it's just like me going through rough times man it's just like my mom going through rough times herself and it just made me the person i am today you know me losing my father when i was seven years old back in 94 through cancer you know things like that man it's just like you know you know stuff like that that's what made me who i am today and it's like um just me going through st stressful times sometimes and it's just learn how to be patient and that's who made me i made me the person I am today. So hopefully that helps you with that question. And that was by LNG. Thank you for that. Let me see how much time I got left. No. So got time. Alright. Mike says, what's your favorite Esham album and your favorite Nodis album? Um, dope question. Um Esham, I would have to say I would have, well, I have three the, 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 that are my favorites. Um, I like Kill the Fetus. I like um, like Kill the Fetus, Close Casket, definitely. That's my favorite. Like, his best production, like, around 93 to 95, to me, was, like, his best. Like, in his, he was in his prime, in my opinion. Um, and I like... Um, and Dead Flowers, th those are my favorite Esham albums. Um, those 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 albums right there. Those are my favorite. I would say like after 1997, 98, his his um his production started getting a little bit more. It wasn't as dark. Like he, you could tell he's trying to go for the more commercial sound in a sense. It was still underground, but he was his, his stuff was a lot more cleaner, production wise. It's just it wasn't as good. Like he he started going more gangster. He was trying to stray away from the um horrorcore. He was trying to go more gangster. And I think to me that's what kind of, you know, it kind of straight. I don't know. It, it, it kind of alienated some of his fans, and it alienated me because by the time he came out with like tongues, I was like, no, that that album. And I do have that in my album, my collection. Um, this wasn't crazy about that album. My favorite Nodis album, hands down. Do you believe in God? That album right there. Yo, funny story with that album. Um, back in two thousand two, when I was still living in New York. Um. Some of, some of my subscribers, subscribers who's who lives in New York or don't, um, I went to Green Acres Mall because Green Acres Mall is like seven minutes away from me. Well, when I used to live in New York, and um, you know, at Fye they have like the ninety nine cents bin, whatever. They had the dollar bins. They used to have that back in the day. They they don't do that no more. Well, it depends on the Fye that you go to. Um, and I found Do You Believe in God, and. I was like, oh shit, this look dope. So I picked it up, didn't get anything off it, popped it in, yo, blowed me away. That the beats on the album, oh my god, it's out of this world. And in my opinion, the darkest album in hip hop history. Ain't no album touching the album as far as production. As far as dark beats, the album tops the cake, yo. And a lot of people don't really know about the album, but yeah, that's a dope album. Very it's out of print. It's very hard to come by. So if you could get it, definitely pick it up. Um, I got to do a review on the album too. 
Um, that was a dope album. I do like um, I, I, I like Life After Death too. That was a good album. And Blasphemy was okay. Um, but I like Blasphemy, but it wasn't as good than as I think Life After Death was a better produced album than Blasphemy. But do you believe in God? Far none, by none, but far none. Bar none is their is their best album. Love that album. Um, Mike says, thank you for that question. Anthology F Life fourteen. What up, my nigga? Um, damn, I hope I'm not too late, my brother. What's the real is What's the real definition of lyricist to you? That's a good question. Um, whew, that's a good one. Um, to me, a lyricist. Well, for one, you have to be smart. You have to be literate. For one, um, you have to have. You have to know your. Um, you have to know your way around words. Like you know, you gotta know about compound sentences, um, dope cadence, um, breath control, good breath control, um, because you have some MCs that the, the lyricists, but. They just like push every. They do a lot of punch-ins and like they do a lot. Of, they try to put everything in one. And it just sounds sloppy. This is like they might be good, but it just doesn't sound good because they try to put everything, everything at once, and it it, it just sounds sloppy. It doesn't really sound really good. But um, yeah, like I said, like I, I like I said, I think you have to be a smart dude or a smart girl, or whatever. A smart MC, like somebody that's literate. Um, like I said, cadence, breath control, um, know the way around words, like synonyms, um, um, you know, things like that, you know, just like being clever with their wordplay and stuff like that. To me, that is a lyricist, in my opinion. That That's that's my opinion on that. Anthology Life 14, thank you for that question. Um, next question. Is by my dude um, Ben Bolton. I have two questions for your Q and A. First one: What was your thoughts? What was your thoughts on Mary J. Blige's The London Sessions, and what was the first album you bought and listened to? Um, thank you for your questions. Um, the Mary J. Blige London Sessions. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard that album, but um, I'm a big fan of Mary J. Blige. But I like her from the '90s, you know, because. When she came out with What's the 411, the remix album, um, her second album, um, I think it was called My Life. Yeah, I think it was called My Life. Um, Share My World and Mary, that came out in 99. Those albums right there, classic albums, man. But I don't like her new stuff now because it's a lot more commercialized. It's just like, I don't know. It just wasn't as good as her older stuff. But then you got to remember back then, her um, older stuff, she was using cocaine she was using a lot of drugs so i guess that's why the music sounded so good uh, which, which is a bad thing but it's, it's how you take it i guess it's how you see it but um she was definitely she was definitely putting out dope music at that time yo but those four albums that i mentioned no well, i should say five if you count the um the remix album those yeah like those albums those are my favorite albums from mary j blige but anything else like when i heard like no more drama which was okay that was okay but after that i just wasn't really feeling her shit um and you asked me what was the first hip-hop one we bought which I already said and listened to him. i already said uh marshall matters lp um well he said listen to the first album i would have said that i've heard i didn't buy it but i heard i would have to say that i remembered I probably would have to say Cypress Hills on um, Black Sunday. I remember that. That was one of them. Um, I would have to say Gangstar's Daily Operation album was one of them too. And this was back in the early 90s. So, yeah, that was definitely... And I was a young kid, but, you know, it's just like my cousins, my, you know, friends, and like, you know, people who, like, the older heads, like, that I used to hang out with when I was young just play that stuff, you know. So that was, like, one of those... Those were like one of the albums I've listened to that I remember. And Ben Bolton, thank you for your questions. Uh, next person, GPM. What kicks do you rock? And are you into the sneaky, sneaky, sneaker game? 
what and he also asked what's your opinion and liking of football parentheses soccer all right um kicks i do like kicks i like jays but um i don't go crazy over them because they're too fucking expensive in my opinion um you know they go for like two hundred dollars four hundred dollars um which, which is another thing that pisses me off about the sneaky game because you got these hype beasts that you know they you know they'll buy the sneakers but then they'll raise up the price they price gouge the prices and you fucking it up because like you're making it to the point where like everybody can't afford it like people can't eat like I understand you're trying to eat but I can't respect that because it's like you know you gotta you gotta give and take I mean people will spend the money but I mean, realistically, it's not something you could wear like every day. You know what I mean? And that, that's my that's my beef with um with the sneaker game, and that's why I'm not really big on to, into that shit. You know, like I'm not very particular with sneakers. Like I'm a Nike head, New NB, New Balance. I love New Balances. Um, Tim's. Um, I do like some of the polo boots, but not. I like the old school polo boots, like the Ranger boots, the like the Ranger style boots. Those are dope. I love Wallabies. I got these joints right here. Got the Wallaby Run. Um, this is this is um compared to this one. Give me one second. This is the original um like the original Wallabies. This is all fucked up. You know, these are old as hell. But um, they came out with these, and the reason why they came out with these is because the gum bottom right here. Um, they don't make these no more. They st um, I think it's simply because I've heard I heard it from a source. The gum bottom is because of the tree that they was getting the they they get the sap from. Is what they use to make the um like the the, the gum bottom. Well, that tree is going is going extinct and is after that is no more. So. I think that's why they started coming out with the Wallaby Run. So, like, you know, it'll last longer. doesn't get as dirty and stuff like that. So, I'm glad they actually came out with that. But, um, that's it. Um, about, that's how I feel with the sneaker game. Uh, he asked, and you asked me, what's your opinion and liking of football, soccer? Love soccer. Um, when I was younger, I used to love it a lot. It's, um, when I moved to Costa Rica back in 97, you know, um, I lived there for like a year because you know my grandfather was sick and he died um a year later so I lived out there and um over there that's what they play you know Spanish countries and third world countries you're gonna play soccer um and I'm glad you said football because that's to me that's the original name for soccer is football you know because you play with your feet you know compared to what you say um what people call football here in the states it's not really football it's rugby. You know, but you can't tell you can't tell a Steelers fan that because, or a Patriots fan that because they're fucking you know like oh you're not a real man blah 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 fuck you it's rugby my nigga I don't give a fuck what you say it's rugby it's not football so but yeah that's my f um but anyways getting back to that um football I mean yeah football I love football a football or soccer um loved it you know. And you know, it was to the point like I had video games from like Super Nintendo, um, <clears throat> yeah, Super Nintendo, N64, like International Superstar Soccer Deluxe for Super Nintendo, which is extremely hard to come by. I mean, my mom had to go to Panama to get that shit. That's how hard it was to get. I had FIFA in '98, and you know, f when FIFA had um came out with the World Cup back in '98, when Brazil and, and um and um France played, and that was a great match fucking love that match but then after that I kind of fell off I stopped watching it for um over a decade and no lie no bullshit I didn't get into it back until when it came out with the World Cup 2010 when um Spain and, <clears throat> and Netherlands played I think that game was ready I don't give a fuck nobody said that fucking octopus if I see it I'm gonna eat that shit but um anyways yeah, and then that's when I started getting back to soccer because you know I just got bored with it. It's just I just lost interest in it. But um, and and thank you for that question. Let me see how much time I got left. Alright, uh, still got some time. And thank you for your question, GPM. Um, 